He had to talk nice to that motherfucker. Put a little, put a little sauce on that motherfucker. You feel me? All right, but when evil parents realize they've been caught, man, we live every day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, man, join the way we found. We're going to get right into it. When evil parents realize they've been caught, we had a little struggle, but it's cool now. We set. We good, chat. Everybody everybody, clap it up because we scrape. Um, I just went away from home because I don't think a family of 15 and my two little sisters right now are teamed up. Oh, oh. How old are you? I'm 17. When a 911 operator for Riverside County receives a strange call from what sounds like a very confused child, she has no idea of the horrors about to be revealed to her. In the very early morning hours of January 14th, 2018, a home security camera in Paris, California captures what looks like a young child fleeing from what seems to be a typical suburban house. The child runs shakily down the driveway before picking up speed once hitting the sidewalk and disappearing from view. This is 17-year-old Jordan Turpin, and though she's been planning for this moment for almost two years, she still has no idea what she's about to do will change the course of her family's lives forever. Interestingly, another person, this one looking to be older, also emerges from the house and moves quickly down the street off camera, though in the complete opposite direction, only to return a few minutes later and re-enter the house. At the same time, Jordan makes it to a corner down the block where she stops beneath a stop sign and, with hands shaking violently, dials 911. I just ran away from home. Okay, do you know where you are? Um, I'm actually in California, Paris. Do you know what street you're on? Um, no. Uh, do you see any signs or anything, like any street signs? No, I... No, I don't. The operator speaks with her for a minute before realizing this is a matter for the sheriff's department and asks Jordan to hold on one second while she transfers her. Jordan agrees and stands, panting in the darkness, full of adrenaline and fear that at any moment her parents will appear out of the shadows. It's me, it's me with the Sounds like some scary movie shit. She says she's in Paris and she ran away from home. <laughs> okay, hello? Hello? She sounds like a scary movie. What's your name? The operator asks her to spell her last name, and Jordan tries, although she misspells it both times the operator asks. T-U-R-P-E-N. Do you need my address? Yeah, what's your address? Okay, you got give me a minute. It's going to take a while. Here, Jordan pauses, taking a couple of deep breaths before doing her best to provide an answer. I live in... Okay, this is my address. 9257 K. Did you get that? Case? Is it C-A-S-E? Okay, sorry. I'm going to start over. My address is 92570-5574. Did you get it? Okay, so now you just gave me a whole bunch of numbers. You didn't give me any kind of street name there. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um. Well, okay, she got to be a kid. She, she, she young. Your house. Is that right? Yeah. She don't know her address. I'm not sure. GPS this shit. Not you. Talk about the lady on the phone. It's later revealed that Jordan has never been to school or received any kind of formal education whatsoever. Oh, so shit. the fact she's able to offer anything at all is actually rather impressive. The operator asks Jordan a couple more questions about her location before getting to the heart of the matter. Why did you leave your house? What? Why did you leave your house? My two little sisters right now are chained up. Where are they chained up at? On their bed. Then there's what? 13 kids? There's 13 kids. 13? Mother and father. Are you in a corner right now? I'm, I might be. Are you at, is there a street sign? Is there a pole with two names at the top? I just see, I just see a stop sign. Okay, can you go over and stand right at that stop sign? Yes. Shortly thereafter, a deputy I chained up. at the end of a long graveyard shift the fuck? pulls up to the curb, getting out to greet the small, disheveled figure standing alone in the darkness. Hi, Jordan. Hi, what's going on? Okay. I just ran away from home. Okay. And I live in a family of 15. Okay. Thank you so much. There's a mother and father, and then there's... Thirteen kids. Uh huh. And how old are the kids? Thirteen okay, fucking all, kids. Like, okay, my older sister's twenty-nine. The youngest is two. And they all live in the house. Her yes. movie shit, exactly, mate. Nine-year-old sister. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, what I'm up, Tesla? I'm kind of scared to ask to move out because 
of their mother. Some of them have asked for a job before, and she acts like that's crazy and it would never happen. But, um, my two little sisters right now, chained up. How old are they? Everybody say we have to test them, man. And 14. They're chained up because they stole mother's food. Uh-huh. What the fuck? Yeah. And do you want to know why they stole mother's food? Because they were hungry! Okay. All we ever eat, for like probably like two straight years or three or more. The fuck? But we always eat the same things. But sometimes we do eat. I'm sorry if I talk too much. Okay. I've never talked to anybody out there, so I don't. I d I've never been alone with a person, so this is very hard for me to talk. Despite Jordan's marked level of trepidation, she continues to divulge as much as possible. Thirteen fucking kids. Though she clearly struggles to put it all into words. She picks up where she left off with the dispatcher during her 911 call in regards to Turpin family life and how little the children were fed. I don't know much about my mother. She doesn't like us. She doesn't spend time with us ever. Who takes care of you? Uh, I, I take care of myself and mother does buy food for us, so she feeds us. Okay, all we have to eat is peanut butter sandwiches. Uh -huh. Peanut butter, hold on. Mother. Hold on, say that shit again. Okay. All we ever eat is peanut butter sandwiches. Oh, oh hell no. Nah. tell mother that they're hungry. But she has to give it to them. And then when they throw up, she says, You're supposed to tell me if you're hungry, I'll give you something. And then they try to tell her, and she just like, Okay, go on. So. Um, You've never been outside before? Okay, I've been outside. Uh, do you go to school? No. I've, I haven't finished first grade. Uh. Jordan, having been sheltered from the outside world, is painfully apparent when she concedes that she isn't familiar with the most basic of health-related terminology. Does anybody at the house take any kind of medication? Oh, I don't know what medication is. Any medicines? Uh, when we have a cold, sometimes we take... Oh, she don't know nothing. That's crazy. Uh, I don't know. We don't take medicine much when we're sick. Right, so How did you... Do your parents know you left your house? No, they don't. Do you take any medication? What's the medication? Medication? Yeah, what's the medication? Do you take pills? Do you take pills? Oh, I for... don't think I've ever taken a pill before. Okay. Right, I haven't. Um, but... What about your other siblings? Do they ever go outside? Bro, clap it up for her though, bro. This this girl right here, she actually ran outside. And she's trying to say all her 13-year-olds... all I mean, all her 13-year uh, siblings. That's crazy. Shout out to her. She don't even know how to speak right. But she know enough to like that shit ain't right. I gotta go save him. That's that's tough. That's hard. That's hard. Shout out to her. Okay. Mother treats them right. They're like they go out every day when she goes out, but she takes turns sometimes. It's two right now. But we is one. Mm -hmm. Facts. Was crying, and mother got her head with a pencil, uh -huh. and she just turned one. And we was like noticing stuff, like we was like, did you get amnesia? Cause she started acting weird after that. And so, um, so. So you don't go to school? Right, I don't. Do your school. parents? Do they let you go outside? Uh, uh, I've never. Uh, we don't even go in the backyard. But the reason I called, and the reason I managed to get out here, this is one of the most scary things I've ever done. Uh huh. I'm terrified. But they didn't even make I a movie on her. My two little sisters, they chained up right now. Mm -hmm. And they. Do you, have, do you have pictures of that? Yes, I can show you. I actually didn't have it, and then one of my sisters told me I need to get pictures. So see, here you can look at that. See, those are the places that make it on that. And they, that's, and see how dirty she is? We're so filthy. We, we, we don't take baths. We don't. <clears throat> is this a, is there a cell phone number? No, that's To it. this? Oh, uh, no. Can I look at, do you have any other oh, photos? Okay. You. You might be able to get yes, those are just photos of me. I have pictures and videos, but they're on my camera and I oh, I have to go Have you lived in other states? Um, yeah, Texas. Did they act like this when you lived in Texas? They actually yeah, they act different. They actually send all of their kids in a 
house, and they left us there for like four years, and then later they came back and picked us up. But they're living with us right now. As the what? neighbors of the family would later report, the family who'd moved to Texas in the late 90s kept entirely to themselves until a decade later, when they apparently fled in the middle of the How night. How you leave the kids? Of explanation. When neighbors went over to the mobile home to check on the dogs that Appreciate been you, Katie. There. I didn't even know that. We gotta watch that shit. But how you leave the kid for four years and then come back? They not you can't you can't do that. That's not like a relationship. You gotta stick with them forever. They hey, how you gonna have thirteen kids though and just up and leave one day? That's crazy. That's crazy, chat. And then Katie? Who? Yeah, facts. They treat them wrong. We're facts, like horrified by what they saw. I ain't even know, the Katie. Dogs had apparently been found surviving off the used diapers left amid the other trash and feces left in the home, and the doors and refrigerator all bore padlocks and frayed ropes tied to the multiple bare bunk beds. It would later come out that this was where the Turpins had abandoned all but two of their children for at least three years, while they themselves lived in an apartment nearby, only coming by once a week to drop off a small amount. Of food. You treat them like dogs! We live in still, and sometimes I wake up and I can't breathe because how dirty the house is. But lock they ass up. I don't Fuck, I don't even want you we need to go to the I don't even want you to talk to them like I don't even want you to talk to them. When you see them, you lock them up. You don't talk to them. Hey, oh, cop, you don't talk to them, you just lock them up. Don't they ask for a reason? Say, look, your kids already snuck out, told me everything. They gonna shit they pants right there. Lock them up when you see them. I don't wanna see no talking, man. But sometimes we think stuff might be wrong with us and we tell mother and she just says, go on. When was the last time you had a bath? Uh, Thanks, Mike. I don't What's know, the title? almost a year ago. What if I went to your parents' house right now? What would they tell me? Oh, uh, I'd be terrified. If you went to my parents' Appreciate house, you, they Katie. would see me. Um, How did your sisters get like this? Okay. Your parents chained them up? Yes, because they stole food. Okay. But they stole it because they were hungry. <clears throat> You make sure to save these, okay? Okay, I will. Don't get rid of those. I will. I won't. Yes. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Take a seat in the back of my car. Yes. We're gonna go around the corner, okay? okay. Yeah, go get the ass, yes sir. Go take a seat back here. Okay? Get the ass, At this man. At point, the deputies heard enough. He radios for backup. Just get they fucking the ass, man. The police car Boys, to man. driven to the family home. He reassures English, her she man. doesn't have to see her parents. On the way over to the house, Deputy Kalachi asks Jordan a few more questions. Well, stop asking her questions. Get that nigga. Bro, bro, you blowing me, cop. Bro. She she told you enough. Go get that nigga, man. Are you hurt? Oh, no. Not right now. Okay. I'm getting amped up for this shit. Are your parents sleeping? No, they're... Oh, I think they're up. Uh, Wake their ass up if they is. I don't care. Have you ever tried to escape before? Yes, I have. How much would it cost to take me to Nevada? Nevada? No, no, not Las Vegas, just Nevada. Uh, uh, just the border, just at the very beginning of Nevada. Yeah, how much would it cost? They really trying to escape. Huh? No. No, I'm 18. Okay, a couple hundred. Um, I'm not going. I'll take a bus. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Well, what happens when you try to? Um, my parents never tried to. My parents never caught. But my older sister, if I turned away, and she caught her, and she was, she was, I think, just turned one. Yeah. She was like, and her sister called her and brought her back home and she got in so much trouble. You can't run away at 20? They still got a hold of her at 20. So she really saving everybody. She saving the adults too. It's crazy. Has anybody ever been to your house before to check on your welfare? Um, like have, like have any of your other siblings called the cops? No. Yeah. Some of them have wanted to, but they transferred to did you call the police? I don't. I didn't have a way to get a phone yet. This is the first chance that I got the phone back. Like, I stopped this phone probably, like, less than a month ago. But the next chance I got to call and run away was... How did you get a phone? Okay, it's my brother's phone. He was going to throw it away. And it wasn't used. 
And so, I, I needed a way to call number one, and I asked my sister, would that be okay? And, because we don't know much, and so... Yeah. Why don't you know much? Because they didn't teach her, dumb nigga! Bro, 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 my bad, bro. He's, he's made me mad. <laughs> bro, hey, yo, bro, he's made me mad, bro. Hey, yo, tighten up, bro. You blowing me. Go get them niggas. You, you keep talking to her. Go get them niggas. We don't go around. We, our parents never tell us things. When we hear stuff, we're shocked. It took forever for us to She didn't go to school. What, what you think, know, nigga? So long. It took forever. And even the 29 year old doesn't know this? Okay, the 29 year old does. She knew. Damn. Just blew that shit out of me. The sister, 29-year-old Jennifer Turpin, had in fact tried to escape once when the Turpin family lived in Texas, but without any form of education or identification, she was eventually forced to return home, where she was promptly punished. Yeah, but it's fucked up. To that phone? Uh, I don't think so, really. How did you call 911? Made me mad. Call 911. Oh. What's that? So your parents, you're 17 years old? Yes. And throughout your whole life, you've never gone to school? Right. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Ka Kate, Katie, because I was getting mad at that nigga. Uh-huh. You saved them. How did you start first grade? Oh, in homeschool? Yes. And you've never gone to school? Right. What else do your parents do to you guys? Oh, my brother came up to Why did you decide to leave today? He was old next chance I got that I could how did you get a chance to get out? Well, my, uh, I'm actually terrified. My mother was in the kitchen talking to the, to the old one, and she was laughing and stuff. And I was terrified that she just got real mad because she just, like, was, was you know, that's my little sister. And I was just like, well, she started saying that she was going to do stuff to us. And so I was, I was just so scared, and I just left. Yeah. I just went out the window. And she, I don't so when you left right now, you left out the window? Yes. Oh, she look. She had an actually plan. Bro, they had to make a fucking movie. Like, they had to. She actually wrote a plan out like the window's right there. I'm going to jump to the drone and get out. That's crazy, bro. Shout out to her, but she's a real one. She saved the whole family with this one. Mom was awake when yes. you... She was in the other room? Yeah. Does your dad have a gun? Are there any weapons in the house? But they don't use it. How long have your mom and dad been married? Jordan is referring to her mother, 49-year-old Luis Turpin. According to both of Luis's sisters, Luis essentially ran away from home with the then 23-year-old David when she was only six. Ah, David nigga. <laughs> you ugly, bro. Bro, what the hell? Winchell family in their hometown, and it was what for this fuck? reason that Luis's parents gave their blessing for the two to get. The nigga scared me. She scared me, and he scared so me too. All kids have the same mom and dad. Yes. According to David's parents, the reason he and Luis had so many children was down to them both being deeply religious in the Pentecostal faith. <laughs> the couple didn't attend a church or even have one near their home. Does your mom take you to the doctor? Not all the time. There was one time we all went to the doctor, and that's because we were sick. The doctor told us that. Yeah, COVID. One, like, no, they didn't. It would have been too late. She always waited for the last minute for us. Have the police ever got involved with this? No. Well, why don't you guys just leave the house? Because Bro, you was the... We don't want to... Hey, but this cop is a hoe, bro. I don't like this man. She just said, why you just don't leave the house? She barely knew me. She didn't know anything. She never been to school. She don't even know what things are that you know. And you keep asking her dumb ass questions. Well, why you didn't just run away? Nigga, why you didn't just cut your hair? They have a way. Everyone's always looking. There's always somebody. Well, you said your mom's always gone, right? Right. So well, why don't you just leave? But he can. Hey, yo. You, hey, yo. You got one more fucking time, yeah. You got one more time, bro. This beeping noise was actually just the low battery sound from the smoke detectors in the Turpin's home. It seems Jordan is under the impression that this was a signal from some sort of security system. 
At this point, the other officers pull up to the scene and Deputy okay. Kalachi steps out of the car to direct them. It's now 7 a.m. and the sun has started to rise on this cool January morning when they approach the front door and knock loudly for a couple minutes. Yeah, you better wake up. It's time to get ready. Let's get it. Let's get you fucked up. Hi. 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 Sorry to bug you. Yeah. Good. We got what? a call um, for a check the welfare here at your house. Yeah. So, What's up, Cola? Check the welfare, so you just basically check on everybody, make sure everybody's okay. Yeah, what's yeah, going on? You guys have kids in the house? Yes. Okay, do you mind if we come in and just take a look, make sure everybody's safe and everything? Yeah, where are the kids at, nigga? Okay. What kind of call did you get? Well, we got a call that there was a young female walking around saying that she. What type of call did you get, nigga? And we were able to find out that this was a house, and we just wanted to check and make sure everybody was okay. They hit she came from here? Yes. From, from your Yes, from so. your crib, yes. Yes. Otherwise, we wouldn't be knocking on your Did door or something. Oh, nigga, it's your daughter, nigga. It's your daughter. Hey, bro, stop playing with me. Lock her up, dog. Fuck okay. all the talking. The officers are careful not to mention Jordan by name to not implicate her to her parents' faces. Once we get in, make sure everything's okay. We'll, we'll get well, out of here. We have a lot where we're packing. Okay, we're getting okay, ready fine, to move. Fine. No so it's a mess in here, so... <laughs> no, you're dirty. You're dirty. We ain't hearing about that. You're dirty as hell. You're dirty as hell. We know that. Okay. We, were, we were just in bed. I mean, like... Okay. Well, most people are right Where the kids at? Where the kids at, nigga? Bro, why this weird nigga not talking? Hey, yo, why, why the man not talking, though? Bro ain't saying a word. He dead wrong. He know he fucked up. He know he fucked up. Lock his ass. He ain't ready for that real jail. He ain't ready for that real jail. They gonna be turning his ass up, man. I do have a gun, but it's locked up. Okay, locked up is good. Oh, like that. Okay, well, we're going to come in and check. Yeah, okay. facts. We just want to make sure everybody's okay. Oh, you know, yeah, bullshit. Search warrant or anything? Or no. As the officers prepare to carry out a Lock them up. search of the premises, they have determined there are exigent circumstances surrounding the current situation. Yeah. Courts will typically look at the time when officers make the warrantless search or seizure to evaluate whether at that point in time a reasonable officer at the scene would have believed it was urgent to act. Yeah, run in that motherfucker. Warren. Run in there. Also consider whether the facts suggested that the suspect was armed and planning to escape. Whether yeah, run in there. A reasonable police officer would believe their safety or other safety was threatened, and whether there was a serious crime facts. involved. Police in hot pursuit of a fleeing criminal may also make use of the exigent circumstances exception. As officers push their way past the corpulent door jam that is David and ease their way into the law. Yeah, David whole ass is gonna get locked up. Shocked and horrified by what greets them. Every inch of the 2,388 square foot house's floor is covered in mounds of rotting food and moldering trash. Ew. A powerful stench of human waste hangs in the humid air. Strangely, there also seems to be several dozen unopened boxes and packages of children's toys and brand new children's clothing complete with tags seen peeking out of the monstrous... God damn! Y'all, bro. Come on. Clean up. Alright, well, like I said... You got all the kids. You tell me y'all can have a clean up? You can tell them to have a clean up day? You already get fucked up anyway. You guys, but we just got this call. We, we All we do is we just check and make sure everybody's okay. And we got a call? Yeah, we got a call from, I'm not sure if it was the young girl that left or if it was a neighbor that saw her walking around the street. So we'll get to the bottom of it. As soon as we make sure everybody's okay, then we'll decide. Well, Lock them up. Out. Maybe she was one of your kids that wandered away. How many kids do you have? 13. 13 total? Yeah. Woo! You guys are busy. Officers head to the back of the house. Hey, you do it for fun. Bedrooms, two tiny back rooms. The first crammed with narrow bunk beds, but otherwise empty. And the second, which is crammed with both bunk beds and a filthy mattress, which is sitting on the floor with two little girls sitting listlessly on top. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, girls. So you got the room with the good bunk beds in the other room, but you got the kids on a dirty mattress? Oh yeah, you dirty, and you on a clean mattress. Yeah, put their ass in jail. Facts, 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 facts. Can I see your wrist? Yeah. Okay. 
The officers believe they found the room. Shall they walk through water? Pictures, but there's only one thing missing: the actual chains. The children, obviously frightened and wary of the strangers, give no answers. Though eventually one does point them surreptitiously to a sliding closet door. Mm. Meanwhile, Officer Ogden is still by the door with David and Luis, distracting them with questions and small talk. Where are you guys headed, planning on moving to? Oklahoma. Oklahoma? That's a long way away. <laughs> no, that dirty. You got my family fat. over there or anything no, like that? No, my, my job's moving. Oh, okay. What do you do for work? Finally, as okay. the eyes have adjusted to the gloom, Officer Hogden notices something to his left and suddenly realizes David Turpin may have had a reason to be awkwardly standing in that particular spot in the entryway. Is this another bedroom back here? You got another couple kiddos asleep there? Yeah. Sarge, you got another room in the front right here. Hey, yo, hold on. He's been, he been trying to hide that door the whole time. You think you slick, motherfucker? Now we got your word. You think you slick? Yeah. Nah. Officers enter the previously Watch out, nigga. third bedroom, where they find a boy who is chained by his wrist oh! to the top bunk bed. Back in the girls' room, Officer Rodriguez slides open the closet door and looks inside. Yeah, they they cook. Oh yeah, uh, they cook. Let's just uh, go ahead and detain the. Uh, Thank you. At this point. Uh, ma'am, why don't you step over here for a minute? Okay, with you. And sir, step over here for a second. Just step over with my partner here for a second. You got any weapons on you? No. Turn around real quick, I'm gonna check you out. That's bro, you thank you for locking up this whole here. dude. Yep. All right, sir, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna have you turn over here. We're gonna walk outside, all right? Can I get my house shoes? Um, where's your, where's your shoes at? There. Do you have to in the... Well, no, you walking out barefoot, my nigga. Keep going. No, no, he walking barefoot. All right. Well, we got we got the other stuff we're dealing with, and we'll try to find you. I'm okay. Yeah. You don't have any weapons, right here. Nothing, my nigga, uh, wow. Nothing hidden in the bra. Okay. okay. Just making sure, because we have some people that do that, so we just want to make sure. Like I said, I've never been in trouble. Okay. This is a first for me. And, okay. Well. Um, I don't understand. I'll explain everything as That's soon as we as soon as we make sure everybody's safe. Okay. Now <laughs> let me ask you. <coughs> yes. Quickly, are there keys to the little locks? There. Yes. Okay. Where are they? Um, my son and daughter can get them. Okay. That's so in the, house. the ones that are in the house, they know where they are. <clears throat> yes. Okay. All right. Is that what this is about? Well, that's part of it. Yeah, definitely. We we need to make sure that the kids are safe. Did you think it wasn't okay. tied up? I know so, that's understandable, but I can't. Hey, I wish you. I want to hear you explain it. While the parents are being detained, I want to hear you explain it. Inside the house, begin a desperate search to find the key to free the chained child. I can't wait to see you explain this shit. Or try to explain. It's in the drawer that I was in. <laughs> Finally, the young boy is freed. All 13 of the Turpin children were immediately taken to the hospital to receive treatment for their severe malnutrition and other injuries. Their ages were officially determined, and though all had the overall appearance of children under 18, more than half of them, in fact, were actually adults between the ages of 18 Damn. and 29. The 28 year old weighed only 82 pounds at the time of rescue, and all of the A nigga, 28 and only weight. He 28 and weight how many pounds? A 28 year old weighed only 82 pounds. Oh, hell no, nah, bro. That's like a, uh, I don't know what type of animal that is. Cognitive impairment and nerve damage from the consistent lack of food. Investigators would learn that food was something the children were psychologically tormented with, as the parents would buy large food items, such as whole pies, then leave them out for the children to look at. Not eat. They wowed. The toys investigators saw around the house on the day of the rescue were bought for the very same reason. Investigators would also discover that none of the children were educated, and indeed, none would claim to have knowledge beyond that of an average third grader. David Turpin had filed documents with the county claiming he was running a school out of his home for children, but this was later proved to be completely false. The Ain't no way a school's in that building. Children as to what grade they were supposed to be in, on the off chance a stranger asked them during one of their few ventures outside, with the oldest daughter Jennifer explaining 
They loved to point out things in Deuteronomy, saying that, We have the right to do this to you. I was afraid to do one little thing wrong. When interrogated by authorities, both parents were completely unwilling or unable to come up with a single viable reason for why they treated their children. Oh, that's the video! And Luis even seemed confused by the questioning. She later wrote this letter to her children from her jail cell. It reads, Father and I love you so much. We're so sorry for everything we've done wrong and now realize that we had done some things wrong. Things will be so different in the future. The way you eat and outside time and baths will be done more regularly. Man, get the fuck out, bro. Are you dead ass? You talk about it will happen more regularly. Man, you getting life. The future as a family will be so much better and stronger. We hope to see you guys soon. Love and kiss. You getting life. Dad, I promise there will be no chains in the house again. That will you gonna be in the chains. So sorry. She dumb as shit. She's dumb. David had something different to say. Yeah, what's your dumb ass say? to the court. Your Honor, I thank God for all of my children. Each one of them is a blessing from God. My homeschooling and discipline had good intentions. I never intended for any harm to come to my children. I'm sorry if I've done anything to cause them harm. I'm glad that what? we were able to resolve this case without my children being forced to testify. I love my children and I believe my children love me. I hope and pray that my children can stay close to each other and look out for each other since their mother and father cannot be there for Bro, them. And with he them. is. I hope the very best for my children in their future. When it came time for the children to get got mental problems. Courts, one defended her. They parents. both got mental problems. Joy Turpin, 21 at the time, had this to say. I want the court to know that our parents loved each other and loved each of their children. They felt that God blessed them with all their children, mental, so they mental. kept away from the world and trusted God would guide them through life. Through the years, things became more and more overwhelming, but they kept trusting in God. I remember our mother sitting in her recliner and crying, saying she don't know what to do. She didn't want to use rope or chains, but she was afraid her children were taking in too much sugar and caffeine. Our parents didn't know we were malnourished. Our parents That's what I'm saying, Tesla. Like, what the hell? I they blew me with that shit. They were afraid to put us in public school for many reasons. I feel like 25 years is too long of a sentence. I believe with all my heart that our parents tried their best to raise all 13 of us, and they wanted to give us a good life. Who is saying this? Is this a kid? It's gotta be a adult or some shit, because there's no way. Our parents decided to start homeschooling all their children. I believe our parents were afraid to put us in public school for many reasons. I feel like 25 years is too long. Of a it's too long. It's too long. They did the work. I get that child and mother. They should have gave you. They should have gave her ass some more, like just to slap some more on there. Cause the feed, the putting food out in front of somebody and you know they hungry, is violating. You're valing at that point. You know I'm hungry. You put the food out right in front of me. Every day of the week you do that. And you only give me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And you eating Little Caesars, Papa John's, Chipotle. Oh, hell no. Nah. Give it a ass 30. I believe with all my heart that our parents tried their best to raise all 13 of us. And they wanted to give us a good life. The oldest child, Jennifer, gave a statement that seems much more in line with the other children who gave interviews to the press. I'm in college now and living independently. I love him. Not enough, Tessa. That's what I'm saying. I believe like, everything the happens for a reason. Life may have How many years y'all think they should have got, chat? Let me know. I drop it, drop it. I'm the person I am. I saw my dad change my mom. They almost changed me. But I realized what was happening. I immediately did what I could to not become like that. I'm a fighter. I'm strong. And I'm shooting through life like a rocket. In April 2019, David and Louise Turpin were both sentenced to 25 years to life in prison, where they remain to this day. As for the Turpin children, once their parents were arrested, they were split into two groups, with the adults being placed in supportive care, <laughs> and the underage children being placed into foster homes. This should have been where their story hey, my, you funny as the shit. children were now free and should have been safely on the road to recovery. But unfortunately, in 2022, the six younger Turpin children filed a lawsuit against both Riverside County and ChildNet, a private foster care agency, alleging that they were knowingly placed in inhumane foster homes. At the time of this video... Damn, so they, their story still didn't end. They got put in... Well, the resolution foster care. of this lawsuit has not been made. The 
adult Turpin children didn't entirely escape hardship at the hands of the county either. Tons of support flowed in from all over the country after their 2018 rescue, with money from the donations alone. Sixty. Six hundred thousand dollars. Six hundred thousand. The money was placed in a trust, and the children were allegedly unable to obtain funds from the court-appointed guardian of the trust upon request. Six hundred thousand. Until ABC's 2020 investigated and aired a special on the case that, according to Jordan people started listening and doing their jobs and the money was distributed to the Turpin children they better got that money that's 600,000 we were talking about 